Chapter 8 of A Different Cowboy by Joe Jones. How do you like your coffee, Johnny? Tess asks with the following sunrise. He grins. Black, he says as he raises his eyebrows momentarily. She pours him a cup and brings it to him at the breakfast table. And you? He asks her. She smiles. Oh, I prefer a little cream in mine. She kisses him and sits down to eat. Halfway through breakfast, Johnny says, You know, Tess, I've been doing some thinking lately, and I know this town ain't going to allow either of us to go back and get what we need for the house, and I need some work as well. Johnny, I told you, no matter what, I ain't moving, she interrupts. I know that, darling, and I'm not asking you to, but there's a town I've heard of in Arizona called Tucson, there's a lot of money to be made there right now, and we're running out of stuff we need. It's a growing town, and they're in need of carpenters to help build it. I was thinking me and you could just go down there for a few weeks. We'll have Sam look over the house here when we're gone. It'll give us some time alone together, out in the open for a few nights, sleeping next to the fire, you in my arms looking up at the stars. Just think about it. It's just a few weeks. You can see something new, and we'll come back home after we make some good money and buy some supplies there in town. Two days go by, and Tessa agrees. Sam comes over and is put in charge of watching over the property while they're gone. If we're not back in five weeks, you come for a find us, Sam, Johnny tells him. Hell, if you ain't back in two, I'm coming for you. They laugh. Sam stands on the front porch alone as Johnny and Tessa ride up the hill in Johnny's chuck wagon waving goodbye. They ride on until the sun sets. Looks like we're sleeping here, honey, says Johnny. Where's here? asks Tessa. Oh, somewhere in Texas. Probably central Texas, I'd say. Gonna take us a few days just to get out of Texas. It's huge. But once we get out... It's a straight shot from there. Here, take this blanket and lay it down right here. I'll go gather up some wood and start a small campfire. It gets cold at night out here in the open. Johnny gathers the wood and sits down beside Tessa. She leans into him and they gaze at the fire. Tessa reaches into a bag next to her. I brought some pickled okra. You want some? She asks. Hell yeah, I do. I love pickled okra. Johnny, you think they'll ever allow us to get married? She asks. He takes a bite of okra and looks at her. Mmm. Yeah, I doubt it. You know, the way people are here in the South, I don't think we'll ever live to see the day where we're accepted as a couple, sadly. She sighs. But that don't mean nothing. Our love is the glue that bonds us together, Tess, not a piece of paper. A marriage is more than just a piece of paper, Johnny, she says seriously. It's a vow and a commitment between us and God. God, says Johnny. You believe in God? Of course I do, Johnny. You don't? He looks down and says, Ah, uh, I used to. I mean, as a kid... But after growing up, I've seen how cruel this world is, and I just can't wrap my mind around the fact that there's some guy up in the sky watching all of us under a big telescope. That's not how it works, Johnny. And plus, Tessa, how can you believe in something you've never even seen or felt before? And you expect me to believe there's some devil running around underground punching people with a pitchfork? Come on. Well, Johnny, the fact that you've seen so much evil in this world is proof that devil exists. And the fact that we're together proves God exists. The same way I feel your love is how I know I feel God's love. Jesus is everything to me. Okay, so let's say God does exist. But how do you know Jesus is God? I mean, there's a lot of religions out there. What makes him the one? She pauses momentarily and looks back at the fire. Her eyes begin to fill with tears. Because 
I've seen Jesus myself. These scars on my back. They whipped me so bad that day, I was one strike away from God not being able to let me stay here. After they was done whipping me, I fell to the ground. I had lost so much blood that the other slaves left me alone there. They thought that I was going to die anyway. Then I seen a bright light through my closed eyes. When I opened my eyes, there was Jesus, reaching his hand out, calling to me. I seen his hand had holes in them. He told me I'll have to go the rest of my life with these scars on my back. But when we get to heaven, he's the only one that will have scars on his to remind us of how we got there. He then picked me up and helped me back into the cabin to the other slaves so that they could treat my wounds and heal me. Nobody saw him but me that day. It was a miracle I survived. He wasn't white either like the white folks always told us. His hair was like wool, his skin bronze, just like the Bible says. Johnny stares at her speechless. And I know you don't believe me, Johnny, but Jesus is all I had to get through. No, I, I believe you, Tess. They fall asleep for the night and head out the next morning. They travel another four days and finally make it out of Texas. Now in New Mexico, there is not much around but the desert and tumbleweeds. How's this for a change of scenery? He asks. She looks around at the dry, unforgiving land and says, I'm getting homesick. Johnny laughs. Well, my lady, there's a pond looks like up yonder. We'll stop there for the night. Ranger needs some water and we need to bathe. Standing by the little oasis, Tessa stares at the still water. Ranger comes up behind her and nudges her from behind with his nose. She screams as this startles her. I didn't know you unhooked Ranger from the wagon. <laughs> well, darling, you got to pay attention to your surroundings, says Johnny. He sits down on the bank and looks ahead. A gunshot rings out from behind him. He jumps up and turns around to see Tessa holding a rifle. Tessa, what the hell? She points a gun beside him to the ground. He looks down to see a six-foot-long rattlesnake with its head now gone, only inches away from where he had been sitting. He looks back at her and says, Damn, I didn't even see that. She grins and says, You gotta pay attention to your surroundings. This concludes Chapter 8 of A Different Cowboy by Joe Jones. Let me know what you thought about this chapter in the comments below. Thank you.